Good day, lords and ladies. My name is Crescent Empress, and welcome to another special edition of ARC. Uh, today, I'm coming uh, to you guys with uh, tremendous, tremendous relief. Uh, we are here at uh, my home on the center, and I have uh, not checked this game in months because of the rumor that pets and structures were deleted off the floating island. I was frankly just terrified. I, I couldn't do it, but I figured today was... It was time to find out, you know, one way or another, and just face it. So, I am coming to you from my game on the center. This is the, my little uh, home tour interlude here, while we get back on schedule with uh, normal PC arc. So we're starting here in my uh, starting outpost. This is the space that ended up just being, you know, a multi-purpose uh, space for all of our various needs. I tried something a little bit different uh, with my center game that I'll show you guys, but I'll stop here to say hello to the critters that live here. Um, actually, uh, I'll have to introduce you to a couple of critters that are not mine, but I tried something a little bit different this time. I wanted to uh, try like a little village setup, but we'll swing out here really fast and I'll show you, yeah, I'll introduce you to the uh, backyard crew. This is my Rex Aurora. Okay, so then you have the uh, Allosaurus pack, uh, the two green ones here, Minty and Forest Robs, and uh, Delilah and Beltane are mine. Uh, there were about 16 of these guys when I tamed these four, uh, raising just all kinds of hell up here. And then, it looks like there was there was some sort of action happening over here, I can tell. Um, we just have, I come here to show everything off and I have a mess because something attacked recently. Ugh. And you'll see the compound in the shop there, you guys will see eventually. I'll, I will go there last. Um... What a freaking mess. Okay, I'm not even going to bother. I'll see if I can get get a look at their faces. Probably not. But the bears were Bob's. Uh, but it was kind of his project. Uh, they were set here. Uh, much like uh, the creature you see in the background as I try to sort out the animal. The knot of animal critter things that are just clipped into each other because reasons. So, like I said, I was trying a different approach to my uh, build this time. You guys saw Castle Valkyrie was one giant structure. So, I did things a little separately. This is uh, for processing materials, obviously the chemistry bench and the you know, mortars. And I had... It's so nice that they resized the vaults. Like, I'm super excited about that. You can see there are walls I didn't paint, because once upon a time, this thing took up four foundations. With the vault for storing materials specifically for that kind of conversion. You know, material conversion. And... Uh, we don't have too many of these builds, but... This is obviously our forge. I'm content with the little stone forges. There is literally no reason that this thing should be this big. I put it here because uh, the person who helps me out most enjoys the big machinery. Why is it five? Look, look at this thing. It's enormous. I mean, damn if it's not efficient, but you really have to plan ahead if you're putting a structure like that in here. I generally am totally okay with using just the little forges, making do with that. And then we had crafting in here with our smithy and well, smithies and fabricator. And you know what's so nice about using the S plus stuff on PC? Like, I needed two smithies because there was literally not enough slots for all the materials. The stacking mod in S plus. That's so nice. I don't have to have multiple things. 
And then you guys might have seen the Quetzal on the roof, but normally she lives here. This is kind of central aviary. Where we have a couple of pteranodons that it did not get named. Uh, they were put here for it. They were again put here for a purpose that we never actually got around to. But these girls, Nibiru and Inanna, are the eagle set for this game. Inanna was mine. Uh, she was actually, she was actually kind of a fun story. When I got to the center, um, I wanted to build on the floating island. I was absolutely determined that we were going to build on the floating island. For which I figured we would need pteranodons, but by the time we had hiked all the way from the beaches to the swamp, we were at a level to get eagles, and I, I've said before I'm not the biggest fan of pteranodons. Actually, we'll grab Inanna so I can show you guys. We'll go, go on the way here. Um, by the time we got to, you know, the point where we would need to go, you know, airborne to get up, uh, we were in a position to get eagles. And I saw a video on uh, YouTube that was kind of a nice view of the map. So I knew we would need to fly, and I knew that you could find Argents on the volcano island. So that's where we went. At no point did it occur to me or Bob that the heat was going to be an issue. Super heat was uh, kicking our ass in spectacular fashion. Uh, so it was a real struggle. Look at the chaos going on down here. So I just bring you guys in really fast. But, yeah, so it was a trip to tame Anana. It was very difficult. I was not convinced that we were going to get the tame. Looks like you guys have seen some action. So, down here, uh, I, pro I plan to do more construction down here. But, I just, like, I haven't gotten around to it. Which is where I put the farm. Is it convenient access to water and our poop generator Gertrude who stays inside because she's not meant for fighting these guys Pepe and Sven uh, Sven was actually bred by Bob live down here and protect the farm and they do a damn good job of it I just thought this island was so pretty like I was so determined that this is where I was going to call home and I have never regretted it this is a beautiful, beautiful place. And as I'm peeling back up here, we head out to uh, the kind of finale location on the tour of my home on the center. I have never regretted building here. Sometimes it's dangerous as hell. Like, that's usually, as I kind of stated in Castle Valkyrie, not an issue. I don't know that I could have, uh, I don't know that I could live here were it not for, uh, my server settings, which dictate that my games are for stress relief and relaxation, not the ruthless challenge of survival that I think the game was probably supposed to be. I just like to relax here. I do. One of the best parts about building here, I have found, is that, as we're heading over, the top of this island is flat as a board. Or, you know, pretty damn close to it. Which means that my wish, uh, the, what I, you know, told, you know, Bob's that we could each, you know, spawn one thing that would otherwise be, you know, a pain in the ass to get naturally. I chose the thing that would be impossible to transport because as I said I, on my island tour uh, Sekhmet was very special to me I do truly enjoy my gigas so I placed a giga here for myself this is a Resh and she is my main meat harvester 
when I go for meat for the finale location. I will try not to uh, spend too much time, actually, because she's actually on top of the uh, hatch. You can see Kara up there. It deliberately uh, meant to rhyme with Shara because they're identical birds. They have the exact same patterning. Uh, she was here because she was regenerating health and I was doing breeding and the central aviary is actually out of render range for the for her to get the regen. So I plucked her up, put, put her on the roof since I was going to be in this building mostly. But then, uh, like last time, I'll bring you guys in. This is my hunting squad for the center. And Estrella, our team captain, has those colors that I mentioned I really like, the black and gold. But I have some really pretty birds. Like, I have to show you guys. Um, well, I, I've moved a bunch of birds, but they should still be in here. Yes. Uh, my twins, one of them is stuck in the thing, but you can see. These are, this is probably my favorite color pattern that I've ever bred. Now, Plutus and Philomelos are, they're, aren't they gorgeous? Like, the gold and red, I just think is so striking. I really, really enjoy it a lot. But then, uh, I'll stop here because, uh, these three also have kind of a special story. Um, I had never gotten multiples. In all of the breeding that I had done, I'd never gotten multiples. Arca introduced me to the concept with triplets, and I lost my mind. I was panicking because I didn't know if I was going to be able to switch around fast enough to you know, feed these guys and keep them alive. But I managed and named them after the Furies, you know, Electo, Megara, and Sisyphone, and they were a treat. They were actually part of a project that I had going. I was trying to breed white birds. You can't actually get that. The game will not let you do it. Um, I was, let's see here, here he is. I was breeding uh, Talos here, yeah, shout out to Prey, uh, uh, with a girl that I have upstairs trying for an all white bird, because I needed the face and uh, wing membranes for the pairing. I'll show you the other bird upstairs. But the game won't let you do it. It gives you identical clones when you do. You cannot combine that color pattern. It's actually insanely frustrating. As we head up here, it's, you'll, you'll see the attempts over and over. We've tried many times. But I also want to point out, I did uh, improve my facilities for uh, my, my breeding. But as we pop out here, there is one other notable girl to mention. This is Orlif. And she was also just set here because I wanted a woofer in here. And uh, she, I did paint her. I will tell you more about the story about the gold, gold dragons uh, when we do my Scorched Earth tour. Orlif became air transport because there's no going back from Scorched Earth. All I wanted was a Wyvern. So she is also here and regening health. And honestly, she'll probably stay here even after she's regened. I probably won't put her in the aviary since she'll be my main transport anyway. And then we'll pop it back here. This is uh, some of the breeding efforts. Or see, we actually got uh, triplets with. Uh, Talos's colors. You can see those guys here. And yeah, lots, lots of identical copies here. I needed to get Talos against, uh, I went, I went upstairs. Uh, Talos against one of these girls because I needed the white face wing membranes and wings. You can't do it. It gives you identicals every time. And I did improve, uh, you know, that haphazard mess that was my incubation room on the island. It's a much more organized affair now. This is the setup that I use. It 
works pretty darn well for dimorphodons, and this is basically the same template that I used for my wolverns. It's a much more organized affair with a kibble cabinet. But then I will take you guys up here to the last part of the tour, as always, where, where I live. And uh, this was the other girl that I was using, trying to get the uh, white. Because her wings, if you look closely at her, her wings have a uh, lavender, and her uh, wing membranes are kind of green. So I needed those two to get the face, wing membranes, and wings that could then be bred with her to get that white bird that I want. You can't do it. I have put quite a few efforts into it, and the game will not let you have it. But Shirahime was not... She, she came home when she was not put in the combat team. She was brought up here to my personal pet room because I thought she was too pretty to potentially gamble. And these guys were both low level but very pretty, so I brought them home and brought them up here. Alistair was my first Demorphodon in this game. And he's pretty too. Purple and gold. I, I have not seen this pattern twice. Like, this is the only Dimorphodon I have like this. And last I will introduce you to one of my tribute animals. This is Hermes Exalted. Uh, this was uh, back before uh, cross arc transfers were a thing. My original five Dimorphodons and my Dillo were in a friend's game and I just I couldn't have them back. And I was always really sad about that, because I really, you know, I missed my original pets, but there was nothing I could do. So I decided I would kind of find uh, tribute animals to represent, you know, their memory. And Hermes was my first Dimorphodon, and I actually remembered him as all white, but when you meet him next time, he's, he's not all white, but that was how I remembered him. So. I finally found a pure white bird, and he's my, my tribute to the original. And he was very low level, so he stays up here and hides, and he will never be in combat. But that is pretty much the run of it, lords and ladies. That is home for me on the center, and I would like to just take a second here to tell you guys how glad I am I can show this off. I was scared to death that this wouldn't be here when I got back, but everything is okay and I'm so relieved to share that with all of you. In the meantime, I hope you have enjoyed this special episode of ARC. If you did, please take a moment to let me know, and do remember to join the court by subscribing. Until next time!